As many of you long-term viewers will know, and some of you short-term viewers will learn really quickly, I have an interest in crime. It's one of the reasons why I went to school and got my degrees in criminal justice, because this is something that I'm interested in talking about. However, oftentimes what's more interesting than criminality itself is the way that other people talk about crime, is the way that the media covers certain crimes and how they frame the stories. Because we have such a large population here in the United States, over 300 million, the third most populated country in the world, there's going to always be instances of criminality going on in this nation. There's always going to be an interesting or oddball case in this country. That's just the nature of having a population as big as we have. So often, what gets chosen to be covered, what gets national attention, what doesn't get national attention, and how stories that get a lot of attention are actually covered are just more fascinating. And that's what we're going to talk about when we cover this subway shooting. As Devin Tracy, aka AIU, likes to say all the time, what you're not seeing and what you're not hearing is often far more interesting than what's actually being shown to you. By the way, Devin Tracy is still making content on the internet.com and he's making it better than ever. He's actually going to re-release and complete his series on the Central Park 5, and I definitely recommend you sign up to his Patreon, patreon.com slash atheism, and check it out. You can access his full library of videos. He's making them better than ever. Higher quality at patreon.com slash atheism. Go, go, go check him out. Now, with that being said, before we get into the details surrounding this story, we got to throw it over to our sponsor. It's Health with Justice. Supporting our sponsors, especially our long-term ride or dies, help support this channel by the way. Our mental health can be affected by our physical appearance. You know that, I know that, and major corporations selling you not very good anti-aging products know that as well. This is one of the reasons why I actually use and I support our long-term sponsor, Health with Justice. This collagen powder is the best. It's absolutely wonderful. You just put one scoop in your morning beverage every single day, and you'll see that itty-bitty baby glowing skin come out. Look at how much my skin is glowing. It is amazing in every possible way. That's healthwithjustice.com, and you can get 51% off this month only. For my viewers only, healthwithjustice.com. So a couple of days ago, at the time of me shooting this video, maybe a week ago, New York was rocked by a story of a mass shooting that occurred on a subway that was Manhattan bound from Brooklyn. Now, a lot of people speculated that maybe the shooting was actually an anti-Asian attack because largely the station that was targeted appeared to be predominantly Asian. Now, there is cell phone video. It's gone viral. You likely may have seen it. I will link to news articles that reference the video in the description of this video, but I won't show it because it does show wounded people and the way that YouTube cracks down on my channel for showing footage that other news organizations are perfectly acceptable in showing and other content creators are perfectly fine showing is ridiculous shows a predominantly Asian group of people that are wounded laying down on the subway tracks waiting for some kind of aid. Now, miraculously, even though 10 people were wounded via gunshot, it appears that nobody has died. There were some people in critical condition, but at this point, they're all on their way, if not already recovered from their wounds. So all they have to deal with is the trauma of somebody throwing a smoke bomb on the train and firing aimlessly at them for no particular reason or no known reason at the time. Now, it doesn't appear that this was specifically an anti-Asian attack, which thankfully is a good thing because, you know, we would hear about how evil white supremacy led to the attack, but that is not to say that the shooter in question didn't have any motives and didn't have any race-based motives or crazy person race-based motives. What we can tell from his YouTube videos, which have since been taken out by YouTube, is that this guy was clearly a black supremacist. But before we get into the ideology of the shooter, 63 three-year-old Frank James, we have to talk about what went down during the course of the manhunt because this guy fired a bunch of these shots and then he fled and he was not captured for a day or two post the shooting. Now, he was captured. We'll go over the hero that identified him while ironically installing surveillance cameras in downtown Manhattan. I'm a former journalist from Chicago and I just happened to be, you know... I was working the security cameras inside the store. Where, where, where so are I, you? Um... So I was watching the cameras. Oh. So I see that this guy was shit. So I will keep all the police. Yeah. You know, I'm from Syria. Okay, could you start that again? I was guys working in the side store. I was see the do security cameras. I do security cameras actually. 
So when I want to see the cameras the outside, so I see the guy, he walk in the street and say, oh shit, this guy, let me call the police. So I call the police and this guy, we catch him. I'm from Syria. I'm from Jersey. What's your name? Zach. My name is Zach. Tahan. Thank you, Zach. Good job. No Good job. But because, in part, the subway cameras were malfunctioning, it was actually difficult to identify this person because the police did not have footage of the shootings. What they had was footage of him entering the train station, which they had to cross-reference with the eyewitnesses. But the police did a good job. There was stuff left at the scene of the crime that ultimately led to them being able to identify the suspect and ultimately citizens of New York, five of them, by the way, who are splitting a $50,000 reward, congratulations to them, were able to identify and led to his capture. So great on them, great story all around in terms of the people surviving and the consequences of this just being wounds. However, the media and the way that they covered this was absolutely awful. And the reason why the media was so bad in this is that one of the things that you need when there's a manhunt, when you need people to call in tips and report on a suspect who could potentially be armed and dangerous. He dropped a firearm at the scene, but that was not necessarily indicative of the fact that that was his only firearm and he could have easily had another one and he could have easily struck again is the description of the suspect. You want to know height, weight, you want to know the race of the suspect, anything and everything that you can put out to the public so that you can get the best amount of tips possible. You need the most information out there. However, because this suspect was in fact a black male, you saw news organizations actually going out of their way to edit that out of the description. I'm going to play you the footage of the NYPD police commissioner talking about the description of the suspect, which all these news organizations received from the commissioner. They were going based off this video. And then I'm going to show you the ABC News alert that they put out online related to the suspect. And I want you to tell me what is actually missing. Just before 8.24 this morning, as a Manhattan-bound N train waited to enter the 36th Street station, an individual on that train donned what appeared to be a gas mask. He then took a canister out of his bag and opened it. The train at that time began to fill with smoke. He then opened fire, striking multiple people on the subway and in the platform. Again, we will describe him as an individual. He is being reported as a male black, approximately five feet, five inches tall with a heavy build. He was wearing a green construction type vest and a hooded sweatshirt, the color is gray. So there you have her saying that the suspect was wearing MTA related clothing, he was 5'5", five five, actually overweight, and that he was a male black. So this should have been put out there to the public because again, we didn't even have the footage of him entering the train station. And while a lot of people, basically everybody was reporting on what he was wearing, he could have easily taken off what he was wearing at the time so that way he could help himself avoid capture. However, ABC News put out this release, and one of the things that you'll notice is missing is the fact that it's a black male. So they basically broaden out the description to anybody who's 5'5 five five and heavyset, which makes the description effectively less useful. Now, a lot of people will point to an article by Pointer where they said that they don't want the media throwing out the racial description of suspects, but even if you were to press most people in the media who hold this position after the fact, while the person is being captured, you definitely want to put that out there and you don't want to be trying to be too politically correct because if this person struck again and somebody saw him but they didn't know exactly who they were looking for, that would hurt the search effort for the suspect. Now, thankfully, he doesn't appear to have reoffended, but considering that this person was caught on the Lower East Side of Manhattan and my girlfriend works in Manhattan and any single part of Manhattan can be used to get to another part of Manhattan via the subway, this could have led to danger even if she's not particularly in that area that could have affected me personally or any of your family members or friends if you live in the city. And again, even if you don't live anywhere near New York City, the fact that the media will actively avoid giving the full information to the public to appear to not be forwarding racist narratives could put you in danger in the future because you want that information out there, especially when the suspect is at large. It doesn't help anybody to do this. And the idea that not seeming racist should take precedent over people's lives is absurd in every possible way. And by the way, this is actually infectious. It's not just ABC News putting out this one alert. 
that led to this happening. There's a clip that was actually put out by Nuance Bro. Congratulations to him for getting this out there. From the Philip DePranco show, where he's trying to put out the description, but he uses the ABC News description, which is less accurate and less helpful. Really, as of recording, not a lot is known. As far as the suspect, he's believed to be a male around five foot five tall with a heavy build, wearing a green construction type vest and a gray hooded sweatshirt. Now this looks even more egregious because apparently, according to DeFranco, who did actually respond to Nuance Bro's tweet, he got his information from ABC News, but his editor just grabbed the description from Twitter, so they're actually highlighting part of the information, not the race, in the video, ultimately making this worse. So you would have to be watching this video in order to see and paying attention to the description in order to see what the suspect actually looked like, but if you're like me or many other people who consume YouTube via audio, you would not know and you would be less useful in identifying the suspect, which could ultimately lead to the suspect striking again. Now, DeFranco the next day did mention that it was a black male in that instance. And let's talk about the subway shooting that happened in New York yesterday because we've gotten a lot of updates. Whereas so starting off, we got the massive news this afternoon that after a nearly 30 hour manhunt, the suspect behind the shooting was finally caught and arrested by law enforcement with a person in question being a 62 year old black man. Who was but of course, like many other people, he did talk about what the media spin on his extremist views were, which was that he was somehow anti-black. When you actually watch his videos, you don't get that indication. According to reports, the suspect's videos go back as far as 2016, including some posts where he uses slurs, insults women, and makes racist comments. This, including against black people, specifically blaming black women for violence among black people. Sure, he said some cross things about black women, but what you can clearly understand from watching his videos is that he is very much anti-white. He wanted the extermination of white people. His criticisms of Katanji Brown Jackson, which the media just report as him criticizing the first black female that was nominated and confirmed to the Supreme Court, both nominated and confirmed. I know some of you are going to say there was another black woman nominated. Calm down. Calm down. That's not what I was talking about. Nominated and confirmed is the fact that she has a white husband. That's what bothered him about her, not the fact that she was a black woman at all. On top of that, he talked consistently about race war and how the race war was coming and how he was justifying mass shootings and actually thought that there should be more mass shootings, just a ton of extremist behavior. And he also emphasized how the concern about the Ukraine is about white people talking about white people and it's proof that white people are crazy savage and they only care about white people. All of these extremist views were very clear in his videos, and had it been the reverse, I know this is a boring exercise that doesn't really produce anything, but it's important to do it every now and again, this would have been the headline. This would have been the national news. If it was a white guy criticizing Amy Coney Barrett because Amy Coney Barrett happened to have a black husband, this guy would be a confirmed white supremacist, white nationalist, evil white racist, and the motivation for the shooting, even if he shot white people, would have been evil white racism. However, because this is a black guy, because he's a black extremist, he's a black supremacist, we talk about confusing motivations and how he was kind of anti-black, and the media runs with that story before they ultimately bury it, because obviously a black perpetrator is not interesting to the media, so they have to suppress it in every way possible. And by the way, we've seen this happen before with the Waukesha case. This guy is clearly a black extremist, he clearly has anti-white views, he went to a predominantly white area and seemed to deliberately run over people with his SUV that were in fact white, and yet the media portrays this as if it's completely irrelevant, or the person behind the wheel didn't even exist and calls it an SUV attack. People made memes and jokes about assault SUVs and all of that, but in reality, we still haven't gotten a public motive because the media is not interested in a public motive. They made up motivations for Kyle Rittenhouse and part of those motivations of the evil white supremacist system and white people supporting murderers as long as those murdered are actually people who support black people, even though Kyle Rittenhouse's case was undeniably self-defense caught on video. So it could have been, because this was also in Wisconsin, that this person was under the belief that white people are just justified murders and based on the media misinformation that led a lot of people to believe that Kyle Rittenhouse shot black people he could have been trying to get revenge for Rittenhouse the thing is we don't know this and we'll probably never know this because the media is not interested in covering the trial they're not interested in covering his belief system because it goes against the narrative that the biggest threat to the United States of America 
are the evil white racist right wingers that are evil white and racist and right wingers and those are the bad people. But it even goes beyond ideologically motivated crimes. Remember, there was a shooting in Sacramento, a mass shooting that actually involved a mass of people shooting at one another. And the media covered it for a while as a mass shooting. However, once they found out that the suspects in that shooting were in fact black, once they found out, by the way, that the suspects in those shootings were people who were released repeatedly early for crimes and without bail because criminal justice reform addresses the institutionalization of slavery in our criminal justice justice system we have to fight those racisms they stopped talking about it some media outlets actually said it was no longer a mass shooting even though by any definition it met the definition of mass shootings they were like oh it was a gang dispute I mean, a bunch of people are dead, and people who are just out at the club that had nothing to do with anything, those families are still ripped apart, there's still unbelievable human suffering and danger in the area, but honestly, it was gang violence, so just hand wave it away, it doesn't matter, it's just gang violence because the suspects don't line up with the preconceived notions of those in the mainstream media. Now, Frank James was charged with a terrorist-related charge that is connected to mass transit, I believe it's shooting up a mass transit thing, something like that, I don't remember the person precise actual name of the charge, which carries a potential life sentence, but to be clear, even if it didn't carry a potential life sentence, if you gave this guy two years and forced him to serve it for every person wounded, all of the 10, he's 63 years old. That is likely a life sentence for him effectively. And honestly, he deserves that. I hope he gets the maximum sentence. And again, thankfully, nobody was harmed during the search for this person because the media was derelict in their duty. And thankfully, all of the people are expected to make a recovery. Now, how they'll feel going on the train in the future whether or not James's racist anti-white ideology will inspire further people, that remains to be seen, but thankfully, all the people involved are hopefully going to be okay and going to be made whole again. Now, I also want to make something clear to all the conspiracy nuts that are out there on the internet.com who are saying, oh, you really believe that the subway cameras in the station didn't work? This is obviously a false flag staged instance, blah, 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 blah. There's no way this can be real. Obviously, you have never been in a New York City subway. Nothing works in any of these trains. In fact, the signaling system in the New York City subway system is 100 years old. It still requires people and lights to tell people on the tracks when to go forward and when to go backwards. This is why New York's subway system is notoriously inefficient. This is why there's often many different delays. And this is why MTA employees, which there are far too many of them, can't tell where the trains are on the tracks, even though we've been able to do that electronically for at least three decades in this nation. So the fact that the subway camera wasn't working, which honestly, there aren't cameras in every cart anyway. Usually, if you're on a good train, they're in every other cart is not surprising, and most New Yorkers would trade in most scenarios not having subway cameras for air conditioning that is working, which often on hot days is just not the case. Yes, we pack ourselves into those tin cans like sardines and sweat all over each other, and that's just the way that it is while there's track fires and all kinds of delays in the New York City subway system. Know your conspiracy theories are not sensible. Know the fact that you think that this subway system is far more sophisticated than it actually is doesn't make you intelligent. It makes you the complete opposite of that, utterly and unbelievably and undeniably incredibly ignorant. Now, if this was in Europe or in Japan or Korea, then you would have an argument. Then you would have a point. Then you'd have a conspiracy theory afoot. But since this is New York City, the New York City subway line, absolutely not. I mean, even if the subway cameras were working, if somebody told me that rats got into it and chewed through the wires, I would not find that to be ridiculous because that's how insanely dirty and disgusting and in disrepair the New York City subway system is. Now, with all that being said, I will throw it over to you guys out there on the internet.com so you can chime in with your opinions and comments and thoughts and all that good stuff and let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, then you can show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. You can follow me on all my social medias. You can support me via the support links in the description box of this video. This has been me talking about the New York City subway shooting. Till next time.